good evening everyone i greet you all in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ today as we all know we are going to study about uh, on our theme stewardship uh stewardship brings me a very uh, new phrase in my mind which i came through very recently once you follow jesus christ who stewardship becomes a it does not be a option for you it is not a choice you have to be a steward to god so that phrase inspired me a lot uh with no further delay uh, i request uh, westlin to do the opening prayer so that we can move forward okay. heavenly father we present be present with us now let us all this liberal turn to your glory lord lord and the fairness of the gospel lord let us discuss and with chari- charitable and then conclusion the fruitful lord may the breeze of our holy spirit breathe among us instead on the long with witness lord lord let there is no finding of corners of sacrifice long time trust and short term prop- popularity lord in short and dear father may the meeting in the end of the time with your kingdom father lord through the through the one who use few words but the great effect this is christ our lord Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sam. Uh, now we don't have a worship session today, so instead, uh, let's praise God. I request Sister Namrata to share a few words, like how God has led her through this study, how it had helped her in one or the other way. I request Sister Namrata to share a few words. regarding uh, the second series sister yes sister namada um so good evening everyone um i am namrata and i thank god for the opportunity to involve in this second series of bible study um, actually uh, in the beginning i could not involve properly and i could not attend regularly but uh, after after few weeks i started uh, attending regularly and uh, this helped me a lot uh, literally it was very encouraging and cautioning to in many areas of my life uh, through the, especially through thematic study and uh, character uh, bible study so i corrected in so many ways uh, whatever it may be like, uh, regarding personal personality development and taking uh, uh, sometimes through um, through our bible studies god uh, spoke to me uh, uh, regarding my career and also uh, to take a to take an important decisions like uh, regarding my career and uh, god spoke to me um, and revealed his will in in our bible studies and really i am blessed with the bible studies um uh, um every week uh, uh the three days of uh, M- uh, monday to wednesday god will teach at least one lesson uh, that i could uh, implement um, like in my prayer life in my um, in my reading bible study whatever it may be uh, but the major part was uh, through these bible studies um, i'm able to teach or i am able to take local bible st- studies as well i am referring our bible studies ppts and um, uh, the videos uh, uh, in the youtube and i used to prepare uh, from those and i used to refer from those um, literally it, it helped me a lot uh, uh, in my local bible studies um, especially a um, uh, few character uh, bible studies um, help uh, help me a lot to improve myself um, so thank you for uh, giving me this uh, time thank you so much sister namrata that was so encouraging so that we can uh, with no doubt we can uh, hopefully proceed with the next step thank you so much now i request uh, westlin to play a video regarding stewardship westlin one second nancy
Stewardship is really a call to be a holy people. Stewardship is the disciple's response. What is your response? Thank you so much, Sam. That was inspiring and a very good video at very right time. Thank you so much. Now I hand over the session to Uncle. Thank you so much, Nancy and uh, Rosalind. You're doing a great job. Uh, I miss uh, Bincy, who has gone to Bangalore. So in that way, uh, all three of you are taking care after Alan left the team. We have come to the last day of this uh, second series, 42 days. That's really great. Uh, just like that, it was over. I sincerely thank Namrata for that wonderful sharing. Uh, she, she was sharing how it is a blessing. Uh, personally, I was very much blessed by studying God's word along with you. And uh, as we have noted down, today we are talking about stewardship. And consciously, I am making additional statements a true Christian's discipleship. Uh, that means uh, st stewardship is not for everybody, for a disciple of Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we saw in this uh, clipping also. And uh, if you are a Christian, if you are a believer, if you are a true Christian, stewardship is not an option. I'm extremely happy that Nancy started very beautifully. She was uh, realizing it very recently that uh, being a believer, stewardship is part and parcel of my life. It is my blood. That's the way we could talk. Uh, true disciple means, uh, true dis stewardship uh, refers to the responsibility the Christians have in maintaining and using wisely the gifts that God has bestowed. And uh, as we saw, God is giving us gifts and blessings and we cannot afford to hold it with us. We need to uh, share it with others. Before that, we need to maintain it and we have to use it wisely. And God is so much pleased to keep you and me as his uh, co-worker. That's what we read in Corinthians church, the letter to the Corinthian church. We are co-workers with God. In terms of creation, in redemption, and even in sanctification, God expects you and me so we have a responsibility as a good disciple of Lord Jesus Christ to be a, a steward. And uh, it does not start with uh, now. Definitely. Uh, as we saw that uh, in the uh, beginning of the Bible, Genesis first chapter itself, God made uh, human beings in his image. Then he asked him, them to take care of that creation. After that, uh, even when the fall has come, God wanted his people, Adam and Eve, to be the responsible person to take care of the creation. So right from uh, Genesis first chapter, we read that the work of the creation is very much part of uh, God's plan and purpose. And you and me have to be concerned about creation and redemption. In Jesus, we have a new life. We know that uh, the old things are gone and we became new. And then we consider that we have a role to play in terms of not only taking care of our life, in terms of God's plan and purposes. That's what we studied in Ephesians. The church, we as a body of Christ, we are a redeemed people. We have to be responsible to one another and also uh, bringing glory to God. So that leads us to the important aspect for sanctification. We are uh, separated uh, from the world and we need to lead a life 
a very responsible life. So that's a challenge we have received when you are talking about uh, stewardship. And in many of the programs, in church youth meetings and EU meetings and all, when we have this uh, stewardship classes, we have these three T's, treasure, time, and talent. Treasure, more than money. We have many, many treasures God has given us. Uh, intellect and uh, the strength and various treasures God has given us. And we need to be faithful stewards in taking care of the uh, resources God has given us. The time, which is precious for all of us, 24 hours, seven days. But for a believer, it is precious each second. That's what we saw in this um, video also. Each minute is very important for us. So we need to be responsible for God-given time. And talent, the word we need to be a little more careful because today we are going to talk much about talent. The talent does not mean I don't know how to play guitar. I don't know how to speak. I don't know how to lead. So I'm not talented. That's the way people say. So talent is more than activities. Talent is more than what we do. God has given in many, many ways the blessings. If so, uh, what are the uh, gifts and uh, uh, the things God has sharing with us? It's important. So each one of us should take note of it in this evening. All of us are talented. You cannot compare with others and say that I am not talented like hell. I am not talented like him. But you are a talented person because God has bestowed his gifts on your life. Each believer, each disciple of Lord Jesus Christ is a talented person or is given uh, God-given gifts. The worldview of a Christian believer is utilizing and managing all resources God provides for the glory of God and definitely for the betterment of his creation. So that's what God has called you and me to glorify God and to make uh, the better uh, place, the heaven, as a, uh, the earth as a better place for people to live. We hear this uh, from the worldly people, but you have to take it seriously as a child of God. And we are responsible. Why? It's not because now I'm a believer. It's right from the purposes of God in creation. We know that. Uh, it is managing everything God brings into the believer's life in a manner that honors God and impacts eternity. So steward is not just helping people now and then leaving it. Our stewardship is for eternal purposes. So right from Genesis first chapter till Revelation 22nd chapter, stewardship is part and parcel of the church for the God's people and to you and to me. Keep it in mind. And in this uh, series, we looked at uh, uh, various topics. And uh, why I'm mentioning here, stewardship should be connected with every topic because we are created in God's image and I am responsible uh, in, my, in my personal life and my relationships and how I make use of my time for my free time. And what about my future? Again, I'm saying, praising God for Namrata. She was telling that this uh, series was helpful for her to learn one or other thing in the Bible studies, and also it can be applic applicable for her life. And uh, she could mention clearly for her life, in every aspect of our life, it's useful. Thank God. That's what I'm saying. Steward, a good steward is very conscious, not saying that this is God's and that is me, mine. We should not compartmentalize things. It is very unfortunate. In these days, it's very, very unfortunate 
we keep Sunday as God's day and all the other days for us. And we keep some time for family and other time for ministry. And we compartment like things. And even very serious, a very serious problem is uh, we compartmentize. That is secular job and this is spiritual job. I, I don't think that's right. That's not biblical. That's not biblical. Everything under heaven is coming from God. And we need to remember that whatever we do, everything, we have to be very careful in saying that I am responsible to the Lord. And uh, may the Lord help each one of us to connect our whole life together. Okay, So uh, let's read uh, this passage, a very familiar uh, passage. Shall I ask... Uh, um, Who is that? Nancy? I think you have to read. Uh, Matthew 25, Jesus is talking, uh, uh, sharing a powerful uh, uh, parable. And uh, we are going to hear God's word. Uncle, one minute. Yes. Um, it's a very familiar passage, but it's good for us to read it. And as you are going to hear that word talent, don't simply think of one small gift God is giving you. It's a whole life, the treasures, the time, and uh, his uh, uh, heavy uh, uh, blessings on you. All are together, we need to keep it in mind as we are going to hear this uh, uh, parable. Yes, Nancy. Yes, uncle. Just a moment. Bible reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 14 to 30. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold, went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, You entrusted me with two bags of gold. And see, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. You knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken away from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Here ends the reading. Praise be to God. Thank you so much, Nancy, for that wonderful reading. I really appreciate that. Uh, just previous passage, verses 1 to 13, has another parable. And we need to know the context. Uh, of this passage, if you see that there are three parables are given in this chapter. The previous passage, uh, it is about the 
10 virgins, very familiar pas uh, passage for us, 10 virgins. And uh, both uh, the parables direct our minds to a second coming of the Lord. Jesus is going to come as a bridegroom and uh, we need to be alert. That's a message in the previous pa parable Jesus said. And here he said, Jesus master is going to come back and we need to be very responsible. So in a right way, uh, we need to understand that all this uh, stewardship is going to us eternity. Master is going to come. A day will come. That's a mindset with that we have to go forward. And both talks about believers. It's not that uh, the master went around and gave it to many people and said that whatever you want, you do it. That's not the way the parable says. The parable says to his workers, three of them. The previous passage says 10 ladies were selected. So if you are a child of God, if you are a disciple of Lord Jesus Christ, we are uh, interested with, interested with a responsibility. The first passage talks about vigilance. And the second passage talks about diligence. In a diligent way, we need to handle it. So when you are talking about stewardship, we need to be alert. At the same time, we need to be diligent. The first passage talks about church to be watchful. It is uh, to watch when the Lord's coming is going to happen. But the second uh, parable, this one, talks about we have to work. Work. So I'm quite excited uh, comparing these two. That's, that's a balance. That's what we saw last week also. Worship and work to go together. Worship and witness go together. If so, when you look at the stewardship, Jesus is going to come. I need to be alert. I need to be ready. At the same time, I cannot simply sleep. Next day morning, I'm going to get up. My oil is ready. Not that way. Jesus is giving another parable saying that you have to work with whatever gifts God has given you. So with that, we will go forward. And uh, by looking at the context and the background, let us look at the main teaching of this parable in the context of our learning on stewardship. First and foremost, it is uh, the owner is the master. Clearly remember that the ownership of God is very, very important in the teaching of stewardship. I am not the owner. Whatever I have, I am not the owner. God is a owner. We are going to look at a little more on that, but keep that in mind. So this evening, as you're thinking of stewardship, go back. My master is the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, he is the owner. I'm only a tenant. I'm only a steward. I'm only a servant. There are three servants it's mentioned here. I'm one of the servants. So uh, what is my responsibility? I need to look up to the master and his uh, direction and his guidance. And I need to be faithful to his uh, uh, calling. So God has called me to be a faithful servant and faithful in taking care of whatever responsibilities he is giving me. Don't think only the ministry part of it. That's what I'm saying right from the beginning. We are all uh, involving in the church ministries or EU and EGF ministries or different ministries, praise God. Don't simply think that ministry alone. So stewardship is not only for ministry alone. God has kept you in this college campus. God has kept you in this village or in this street, in this city. God has kept you in this company or in this workplace. And you need to be faithful in finding out what uh, is uh, my calling? And I need to be faithful wherever the Lord has left me. 
One more thought I uh, post for it came to me. In this passage, we read that uh, each one, to one he gave five, uh, verse 14, uh, he, he called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. The master is interesting. To one he gave five bags and uh, another one two bags and another one one bag. Look at that. Each according to his ability. God knows you. God has kept you here for a purpose. And uh, you don't need to compare with others. According to your ability, God gives. That message has come to me up, afresh. I don't need to think that uh, I don't need to be puffed up. Otherwise, I don't need to think very poor self-esteem. I cannot do it like that. God knows me. And God has given me his gifts and talents according to my ability. My dear brother and sister, and most of you are young, in this young age, don't uh, look down upon you or don't be puffed up. Have a right understanding in such a way that God has uh, given you gifts and talents for a purpose of his glory. And you will be a blessing to others. Even, God willing, next Monday, we are going to look at in more detail when you're going to have a chapter study. The big picture is important. I'm doing this and that. That's a very simple thing in the big picture of God. So when you're talking about a disciple taking a, a keen interest, being a good disciple, a, being, a, being a sincere disciple, steward you need to have a big picture that's what i am longing to communicate to you you are a disciple don't simply say that i have to do this and i need to spend this money and i need to spend time like this these are all good but that are all small small things in the big picture of god so keep the big picture this evening and i want to be a good steward to the lord one thought very forcefully I want to share with you is stewardship begins and ends with the understanding of God's ownership of all. That's what I'm saying. Big picture is God is the owner of everything. Whatever I have now is from God. Maybe I have developed myself. I am uh, becoming smarter. Everything with the help of the Holy Spirit and with, with the help of the church or with the help of the believers it's happening my friends keep it in mind if i say that uh, i'm becoming better in taking bible study it's because of you it's because of the people around me same thing i wanted to give it to you whatever you do and whatever the way in which you are growing give credit to god and next, you have to give credit to your brothers and sisters at home and in a fellowship, in your church. Very important. Okay, so our understanding of uh, God's ownership is very important. Look at these verses. Uh, Psalm 24 says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. It is completely the Lord's. And Deuteronomy and Leviticus, even Job 41, we can read that. Everything under heaven belongs to me, God says. Everything under heaven belongs to me. I'm only a steward. Keep it in mind. And he is Alpha and Omega. And he is all in all. I am his child. I am his disciple. So I have to be a faithful servant. In this passage, in this parable, we read about two people. One person is an unfaithful steward and another group is uh, faithful stewards. Let's uh, start with the failure of the unfaithful steward. His understanding of his master was very bad. He's saying, you are cruel and what you will do, I know. My dear brothers and sisters, even in, in these days, in the churches, we read about it. We, we read about stories of people like that. We hear 
people saying that understanding of God is so poor. No wonder they are not using the talents for his glory. I'm sure that all of us have a right understanding of God. That is important. That is important. And this says, you are a lazy man. The master says, you are a lazy man. That's the reason you, you are not willing to make use of that one talent. You are lazy. All of us are one. Uh, we, we need to be alert. It is not that we have to go and do things. Even in our quiet time, our uh, movement, our fellowship with God, that are all active, dynamic. Please hear that word. Your quiet time, your walk with God should be dynamic. It is not uh, something very lazy and uh, just lethargic. It should not be. Grow with God. Uh, grow uh, with the grace of God. And grow with the fellowship. And walk with the Lord. Let it be dynamic. Then you will realize the stewardship in the right way. I'm accountable. A very big word. I'm accountable. You are appointed by some company or some, you got a job and you are getting salary. You cannot offer, simply say that I'm getting salary. I don't want to do anything. In that case, you're gone. You are accountable to your boss. You are accountable to your company. You are accountable to the pastor or you're accountable to the person who has appointed you. But now, big picture, I'm a steward and I'm accountable to God. One commentator mentions this. I really like it. This fellow, the unfaithful steward, buried a living talent. It is not uh, something waste. He put it on the uh, ground. The talent, one talent, something, it has life. It can multiply. But foolishly, he kept it under uh, the ground. Many of us, maybe uh, like this person, God has given me some gifts. I'm not realizing it. God has given me some uh, uh, blessings in my life. I want to put it under the ground. And I'm so lazy that I don't have time to think about it. Be careful. Look at uh, the other side of the story, the faithful stewards, the one who got five, Another one who got two. The uh, number is uh, immaterial, but you are you are receiving gifts of God. They know that talents are entrusted to them. How many? How how big? That's not important. Talents are entrusted to me. That's what it, the passage says. Even this evening, how much uh, I feel that. Uh, God has entrusted some things in my hand. Think of it. They know that they need to multiply the talents. Jesus did not say, uh, Jesus did not say that in this story, in this parable, sitting and giving that master was giving. One, two, three, four, you do this. No, no. He simply said, you go. But I'm supposed to multiply the one who got five and the one who got two could multiply. So my dear brothers and sisters, you have to grow. You have to grow through this Bible study, to your fellowship, to your church. Again, thanking God for my dear Namrata. I could grow. You have to multiply. Thanking God for her. Taking this Bible study and using it for my local Bible studies. Praise God. That is one of the objectives of this Bible study. As she was sharing the testimony, I was just thanking God. What all we do as a team and this PPT, if it's something wrong, you just leave it. If it is useful, please, as Namrata said rightly, it should be multiplied. It should be useful. You don't need to give credit to us. Give credit to God. You are blessed and multiply it. Right. Third one. They know that to whom it is given more, more is expected. That's a very powerful message. 
as we are participating in this type of Bible studies, as we are enjoying our fellowships, as we are growing as a church, more and more blessings are given to us and we are more responsible. Others who are not uh, enjoying this rich fellowship or uh, Bible studies or uh, worship, God may not expect from them. But for us, we are responsible people because we are blessed abundantly. To whom it is given more, more is expected. The last one, they know that one day they need to give a con to the master. Master will come back and he will ask, what did you do with my talent? They knew very well. So they had done it. And naturally, they have received credit or reward from God. My dear brothers and sisters, as faithful servants, we also make note of these things. Not only some gifts God has given, there are many, many ways abundantly God has entrusted many things in our hands. How much you and me are very serious about it. And how we are serious in multiplying God-given gifts and talents. And how much I am aware that one day I need to give account to the master. In, that, uh, in the clipping, we saw that uh, what is my response? And that's what I wanted to say here also. This should be our response. First and foremost, we need to say that I must be a good and faithful steward to my master, Lord Jesus Christ. When he looks at me, can he say that you are a good and faithful servant? Don't think that only in the second coming, he will say like this. Even now, he can say that. Constantly check ourselves. What about my time, my treasures, and my talents? Am I doing it for a purpose, for the glory of God, and for the benefit of others? Thirdly, we need to ask these questions. Are we trustworthy people to receive this uh, treasures in our hands? God could have given to the other people. They could have done better than us. Very serious, very serious. So am I trustworthy? Am I faithful? Am I making a commitment wholeheartedly to take care of these uh, uh, things? Am I accountable? These are the questions I have to ask. The fourth one, uh, interestingly, I have mentioned this one. Uh, are we interested in tips or with reward? I'm, make, I'm making a simple illustration. There are stewards who are in the hotels. If you go to a big hotels, people will come and help you to go to your room to take care of your luggages. And the way in which they smile and the, the way in which they serve. Why? Normally, uh, we, we, we feel that they smile at us, they serve us because they expect the tips. Instead of giving 20 rupees, you will give 50 rupees. After having a good ice cream, instead of keeping 10 rupees as a tips, you will give 20 rupees when the person with a smile serves. My dear friend, as a servant of God, as a steward, are you just looking for some tips to receive from people? Or are you looking for the reward? A day will come. You need to serve with smile. You need to serve people joyfully, not for the tips they are going to give you, or the great reward which is waiting for us in heaven. Final one, very important. Do we share the heart of God in terms of his creation? Very important, very important. That's what I said. Right from the creation, we need to think of stewardship. Genesis 1, 26 very clearly says, God has given a responsibility to mankind. Am I taking that very seriously? Uh, the whole creation is longing for me to do my best. This evening, I challenge you. Uh, why don't you make a commitment prayer? Lord, help me to be faithful steward wherever you have kept me. Whatever position it may be, it is not a, a designation. It's not some ministry as a whole. My whole life should be a, a good steward for your glory and for the 
blessing of your kingdom. May the Lord help uh, you and me to be faithful stewards till the Lord comes. Over to Nancy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Uncle. Thank you so much, Uncle. Uh, now, as the uh, study ends, I request you all to freely share either in the chat box or unmute yourself and share your comments and your critical views on the study and how well we should develop on stewardship, how well it helped you so that uh, we can all be encouraged. Anyone? Yeah, William, and another wonderful Bible study, very inspirational. Like you said, uh, this uh, treasure is a whole life. So, like, I never thought of stewardship by that. So, like, treasures in terms of as a whole life. And also, you said uh, the big picture is important. I think that, that kind of like that's a very re revolutionary view of this whole concept of stewardship. So very grateful to God for you and uh, wonderful message. Very blessed here. Thank you so much, Anna. I also thank everyone. And as we all know, uh, this is the last day of a series two Bible study. And uh, so that uh, I don't think from next series we'll be having a thematic study. So I request you all to freely share your views so that uh, we'll be able to uh, tell you about the next coming series and also a few other information. If you all, uh, so if you all had finished your suggestions and uh, sharing your thoughts, we'll proceed further. Okay, now I request a wrestling to come and share a few words about the series to come. Uh, Thank you. Sorry, Wesley. Uh, our dear sister Namrata has uh, shared, Dear Grandpa, heart of God in terms of his creation, is it regarding protecting our environment like that? Thank you, Namrata. Uh, one thing is very clear because in Genesis 1 26, God says, You take care of the creation. So, protecting the environment or creation is one thing. But it's more than that uh, because uh, later in second chapter, we read that God asked Adam to name that animals. Animal kingdom comes under us. And uh, uh, every uh, part of the creation, we are responsible. We are uh, we are with God in taking care of it. So uh, environment is a very important thing. Along with that, whatever we have in our own campuses, in our own workplace, we need to be very careful that I'm responsible to take care of it. And uh, you are a chemical engineer and uh, uh, you need to be very uh, careful that it is your responsibility to make the chemical uh, engineering to be a very protective one, not for destructive purpose. That's the way I look at it, because God has created chemical as part of his creation. And you are an engineer, you need to be very thoughtful in making the chemicals to multiply, to be useful, and to be effective for others. But the world says, don't worry, you can use it for destructive purposes. And very unfortunate, many of the things which we do is destructive purposes, distracting others. And uh, that's the way I look at it. Uh, whatever we do, that we need to multiply and then it's be useful for uh, protecting the environment and it be useful for uh, uh, making people to be happy. Not in a wrong way, in a right way. Also, you, you also said uh, we need to have the right understanding of God. So in terms of, yeah, so that was a, that's another revolutionary thing that you said, like in terms of stewardship, I like, I never like, so that is so crucial for us. So thank you so much. 
God is the owner and everything under heaven is God's. So I am his disciple. I am his child. And I need to be uh, very careful in taking care of the whole world. Namrata has said that uh, wonderful, it's a uh, different perspective. We thanking you, Uncle. Thank you. Thank you, Namrata. <laughs> yes, uh, now anyone else? You can uh, share your question. You can ask your question. You are free to answer. We have Uncle, Joshanna, and you all, they'll, uh, they are ready to answer your question. Okay, so Wesley, you can take your time now. Thank you, I uh, hope you all are enjoying the second series. So, I really, really enjoy to announce this one. We have a third series from next Monday, I mean, uh, means uh, October 4th. So, on Monday, as usual, we have a chapter study. Uh, and then that from Tuesday and Wednesday, it's uh, some different. We're going, we're going to uh, see in a different studies. Like with the Tuesday, we're going to see in a comparative study between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, and then Wednesday, we're going to see in a doctrinal study. So we all are pray for the coming days, uh, pray for the uh, uh, Bible study series three. Uh, we pray for all the uh, things, I mean, background works like. Uh, Technical support, everything, pay for everything. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. As Sam uh, just announced, we have our uh, series three study uh, from October 4th to December 22nd. Uh, Monday, we'll be having a chapter study, and Tuesday, we'll have a comparative study between Old Testament and New Testament. And Wednesdays, we'll be uh, uh, having a discussion panel. Yeah, uh, about the doctrinal study that is very important. Yeah, and uh, I, from the bottom of my heart, I thank each one of you uh, for, for traveling with us this part because uh, we all know the troubles we are facing, the day-to-day -day, uh, schedule we, ha we are tightly packed with, but still you spend your time, you spare your time here uh, to just spend our uh, fellowship time together so that will grow in God. Thank you so much. And uh, in spite of the network issues, you all are uh, very much cooperative. And uh, thank you for all the uh, cooperations that you have uh, given. That you have uh, given us. Thank you so much. And uh, I also, I would also take this time to invite uh, young ladies uh, to the young ladies fellowship, which we are uh, uh, very uh, every month. First Thursdays, we gather online platform, but we gather without fail uh, to grow in uh, God so that uh, we'll grow in one or the other way. As women, we'll have uh, the confidence to grow in God and to speak his word in the right time to the right person. Uh, we have different uh, perspectives of study. So I request every uh, woman here to join us. Thank you for this opportunity. And uh, would you like to share a word, Uncle? Uh, thank you very special, Nancy. I really appreciate uh, uh, all of you for your uh, participation. But my only concern is uh, you are not speaking. Only people like Lavinia, Joshua, and uh, Nancy can speak. Today, even Lavinia also could not, did not speak. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm not, uh, I'm just taking it in light, uh, lighter sense but I'm excited uh, for your keen interest. Um, God willing, next Monday, we are going to look at Romans 12th chapter. That's what I'm talking about um, because both of them may not know that. I'm just announcing now itself, Romans 12th chapter, we are going to study. And uh, next week, it's going to be a different uh, uh, study together. Let's uh, look for uh, different uh, learning. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, brother Julius, uh, I just left. Right, he just left. I appreciate uh, uh, friends uh, like uh, Julius was encouraged many people from Mysore area, and uh, I sincerely appreciate uh, 
uh, other sisters and brothers who are encouraged from their own context. From Northeast, we had uh, new people coming and from Andhra Pradesh, new people coming. I appreciate that. I just noted down uh, in my notebook in the second series, we had uh, wonderful new people coming and joining uh, from different parts of the country. Personally, I'm encouraged to see that, uh, uh, to see their eagerness to study. Even look at Anu from Jharkhand. She has real network challenges. Even then uh, she could join with us like this. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Uncle. Uh, that is really a uh, challenging one, this network issues that we face. Now, uh, if you have any questions, you can just share it freely because really this, uh, this is the last day of series to study. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, Lavanya Hakka has said, taking responsibility is big challenging in every aspect of life, uncle. Taking responsibility is a big challenge in every aspect of life, she says. Lavanya Hakka says. Yes, Nancy, I can. Thank you. If God we can willing, pray and close. Sorry, Uncle. No, no, we can pray and close. If God willing, we'll all meet next week on Monday. Thank you so much, everyone. I request Sister Muriam to pray and close the session. Muted. Akka, you are muted. Okay, Anna, can you please do the closing prayer, Anna, Josh, Anna? Sure. Dear loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening, Lord, in these uncertain times, Lord, and in these difficult days, Lord. Um, like streams in the desert, Lord, we've had this wonderful Bible studies, Lord. Especially thank you for Billy and Lord for the way he has blessed and touched each one of our lives, Lord, through through your spirit, Lord. We thank you for the way you have used him, Lord, to touch our lives, Lord. I pray you continue to bless him, Lord, for his second journey, Lord. You also continue to pray for whatever, Lord. You are a God who, who is the owner of everything. You own everything and you control everything, Lord. We thank you that you will heal him for the Lord. We thank you. You will do a mighty miracle and touch body will Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the all the all the team members, Lord, who work tirelessly uh, hour after hour, Lord, twenty four hours a day, Lord, behind the scenes to make all these possible, Lord. I pray that you will also bless them in a very special way, Lord. I also especially thank you for everyone, every every person who has attended, Lord, the last three months, Lord. I I pray that you bless each one of them, Lord. We especially pray that you would give each one of us a grace and. Uh, the Lord's strength, Lord, to carry on each day, Lord. We once again thank you for Billion and Lord and for his commitment to you, Lord. I pray that you help us also to become more like him and more like you each day by day, each day, Lord. We thank you for this wonderful Bible studies, Lord. I pray that you would be with each one of us this evening and coming day too. Thank you for hearing these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, I thank you everyone for God willing, we'll all meet next week. Hoping